some fear that the airports in the country will be uh, shut. Local and international flights we're hearing may be shut in Nigeria today, Monday uh, and Tuesday. As the unions, we're talking about the aviation unions in uh, or the unions in the aviation industry say that there is no going back on the two-day warning strike uh, declared to demand for improved wages for workers in the sector. The unions had on Thursday declared the warning strike um, on Monday and Tuesday, or for Monday and Tuesday following the expiration of a 14-day ultimatum earlier issued uh, to the federal government through the aviation minister, uh, Senator Hadi Sirika. Uh, which unions are we talking about here? The unions include the National Union of Air Transport Employees, NOATE, the Air Transport Services Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, ATSAN, the National Association of Aircraft Pilots and Engineers, NAPE, and the Association of uh, Nigerian Aviation Professionals, ANAP. Now, they're demanding, amongst others, that the planned demolition of aviation agencies' headquarters in Lagos be halted. Now, if you remember, uh, the unions and the minister have been at loggerheads over his plan to demolish the Lagos offices of aviation agencies uh, to build what it calls an uh, aerotropolis, an airport city. It's been on for some time now. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hadi Sirika, aviation minister, had said there's no going back on the planned demolition, while the unions have said there uh, are no benefits, or no befitting offices, rather, in Abuja for thousands of aviation, aviation agencies uh, whose staff are currently um, in Lagos. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I think that issue will be trashed um, very soon because when it involves aviation, when it involves flying up there, it affects a lot of people that uh, are the policy makers. It affects a lot of people that are the who is who in Nigeria and all that. So they will, they will do something about it. I know that. I know that for a fact. But. Oh, what I keep asking myself is that why at this day and age, or in this day and age, do we still have to go back to uh, or resort to strikes before we can get anything solved? Something as basic as minimum wage implement implementation, why is it not implemented? And the federal government is mulling um, an increase in salaries, as, as they said. They're thinking about an increase in salaries for workers, especially the federal workers. Uh, even though it is not this administration that is going to implement it, but they're talking about it and they're saying that it's going to happen. Landlords have already heard that. <laughs> People in the market have already heard that, and it's not being done. Meanwhile, the minimum wage that was promised a long time ago has not been implemented. And I'm, I'm wondering, mm -hmm. why do we always have to get here? Mm -hmm. Do we have to, to go on strike before the, the needful is being done? Do we need to always be kidnapped before the needful is being done? Because, mm. okay, sometimes the kidnapped Chibo yeah. girls that we are celebrating, yeah. or let me not use the word celebrating, that we are marking nine years since they were kidnapped. The ones that were rescued were sent abroad on scholarship and all that. Mm. Do, did they need to be kidnapped first before the government could yeah, that's do something? A, that's a good question. So, yeah. I mean, it's just a simple thing. Keep to your word, and that is all. And people will move. So if it is something that... You cannot do. Don't promise. Oh. Federal government keeps doing this, and it's it's unfortunate. Yes, yeah. Uh, for for me, uh, I you know that these aviation you know workers always go on strike for one thing or the other. You know, labor unions always go on strike for something. And the pattern I've observed is even if it's for a greater good, yeah. they will still go on strike. Okay, let's take, um, for example, the uh, the telecommunication sector, when they said they want to privatize uh, NITEL, they went on strike because they don't want to lose their jobs, okay? When uh, we hear they want to downsize, for instance, or right-size in the electricity sector, they want them to take exams, you know, to know who is who, and to know who qualifies to be there, they go on strike. When uh, the governor says he wants to give teachers exams to know whether they actually know what they are teaching, mm -hmm. they go on strike, you know? So, so the, the, the workers usually don't want to be put through some of these things. Now, the question for me would be, this aerotropolis, the airport city that we're talking about, in Lagos, um, uh, is, it, is it going to benefit the country? You know, because, I mean, if there's anything that stands to benefit Nigeria and to make aviation better, then, <laughs> I mean, if, if you ask, is, is it more important to have offices for um, aviation um, uh, companies 
you know, aviation agencies or to have a befitting airport for Nigeria that would make things better? Yeah, wonderful I mean, question. there's land everywhere. Wonderful question, Kofi. You know? but, but you see, all these things stem from the fact that government is not trustworthy. The people don't trust the government. Okay, I'll give you an instance. Uh, in, in France, they're having protests. You know why? Because the government said they were going to raise the retirement age by two years. They're going to add two years to their retirement. Which is an, in Nigeria, an irony. In Nigeria, people go all out to make <laughs> age de declarations, to be younger so that they don't get to retire. The reason is that if you retire, you don't even you're not even sure that you're going to get your retirement benefits. You're, you're almost always sure that you're going to retire into a life of abject poverty because they're not going to pay you pensions or give you your retirement benefits and all that. So people struggle to stay in service because at least they are, they are sure of their salaries. So if government comes to you that, okay, we're going to break this place and rebuild something else that is better, that is a good thing. But have you ever gone to somewhere, for instance, where there is flood or there's been a storm and the houses are off? Nema will come and tell you that they are giving you relief materials. And then they come to you five or six years later and give you two roofing sheets. I've seen that happen. So when they tell you that, okay, leave this place, we are going to build a city that is going to be very, very befitting for the aviation workers, the first thing that comes to your mind is, is will they implement it? Will they go out and do what they're supposed to do? How soon are they going to do it? And when they do it, who is going to benefit? Is it going to be the same us, or they're going to bring their cronies, people that are loyal to them to benefit from this scheme? So questions come to the people's minds. It mm. all boils down to trust. Yeah, if we trusted yeah. our governor, our yeah. government, yeah. we will always know that this thing they have said, they will do it, and it's for our good. So, 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 um, the question now for me will be how the Sirica has a project, federal government has a project. Mm. They want to demolish some parts mm. of the airport so they can build what they call Aerotropolis. All right. Airport city. The aviation workers are saying, no, we have offices there, you can't pull it down. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they want to shut down aviation in the country. It doesn't make sense to me. They want to shut down aviation in the country. It reminds me of of, of the electricity workers where, when it was, you know, they were asked to write some exams, mm. you know, so they could know who is who and who knows what. They shut down the national grid in their strike. You know, you know, one day someone is going to come along and will arrest people like this and imprison them because it's a crime. It's, it's national sabotage. You can't say because you are going on strike for something that just concerns you, an exam that they are saying you should write as an electricity employee who's been there since the days of NEPA. And you say, yeah, you don't write the exam. Fine. But you don't shut down the grid that is serving the entire country or entire Abuja because of that. That's wrong. And then they went and they filmed it and they celebrated. In the country where things work, those guys will be in jail. Jail, prison. Well, you know that in countries where you can't, you can't sabotage you know in, an entire country. Yeah, you know Young that, Do you know yeah. how many people uh, w would have had to be on oxygen in the hospital? Maybe because of the high cost of diesel and all that. You know, because I've been in such a scenario where there was no diesel, there was no oxygen, there was no light to pump the oxygen and all that. You know how many people would have needed that electricity to just make sure that their daily bread would have been met? Now we're talking about aviation. Is this worth shutting down the entire economy for? For some, so these unions, and I'm, I'm tired of, of, of some of these labor unions not standing up for things that concern the real issues, okay? So NLC and all these guys, the real issues that affect Nigeria, real. But when it comes to the ones that affect them, they want the rest of us to suffer. It's not right. There are some germane things that we need to see labor standing up for in this country that affects, okay, okay let's talk about police brutality. NSAS, for instance, where were these guys? Mm. These guys don't care about all these things, you know. It's like when Nigerians are shouting for ASU. Yeah, because I was saying to people, ASU, they have their issues. They are, not, they are not saints, you know. So I think we'll move on from that. But what I'm saying is you cannot shut down I, aviation I in their town country I agree. for such matters. I agree that um, 
there are some things that are extreme. But it's good that we're arguing from both sides. Government, stand up to your responsibility. And the people, do what you are supposed to do. That's it. But, you know, sometimes you give someone the opportunity to do evil. And in this case, we will blame the government. And if someone has committed a crime, and you know that your, your part of the story is genuine enough, government has done its part, and they're shutting down, they should have the moral standing to arrest these people and imprison them. Perhaps because they cannot do that, that is why strikes will go on all the time. Because you're arresting them for what? What they're demanding did you do? No. And even if you did that thing, and then because someone who is among these people is loyal to you, and I, I, cannot, I cannot arrest this person because he's close to me, or there's something I benefit from him and all that, these crimes will still continue. So government do your part. People do your part. It is our Nigeria. At the end of the day, we are all going to suffer or enjoy it. <laughs> you want to suffer? <laughs> we'll all suffer right. enjoy all right. no, no, Well, let's see what happens. For me, but I think you know, no, no, this no, one very, yeah, very, very yes, soon. No, no, no union has a right to shut down what benefits the entire country because of a, 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 a matter that is in a sector. I mean, do all you can, but people are traveling. You know, people are moving from, and, and these guys don't have the power. You can't go and shut down an airport as a union. He tried this in, oh, tried it in America. Okay, we are talking about global standards, talking about democracy, government. You can't try it in America. Aviation Union, they, they, the, fly, the, the, airport, the, the pilots can say they're not going to work. It's between the pilots and the company. That's okay, the airline. The pilots can say they're staying at home. You know, they're not, but a union saying we are locking the airports, nobody's coming in. I don't think it's, it's fair. No, but this one includes pilots, it includes other workers. So if they don't go to work, even if they open the airport, what will you do in the airport? Nothing. Well, it's the same thing. Well, <laughs> so you have a point. Government should just stand up to their responsibility. So, do, because so, we shouldn't so, be so, talking about yes. minimum wage for instance. So, so I, I look at also things like cost benefit analysis. Like you have this Aerotropolis. They want to remember. I learned that the new international airport they built really cannot be used efficiently because of this positioning mm. when planes land and all that. So, that's another issue. They, they made a mistake. You know, so I don't know. The benefit to Nigeria, benefit to the economy. Aviation is a big deal all over the world. You know, you go to airports like, 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 like Abu Dhabi, like Dubai, and all those places, and you're almost like you're in a mall. You're like you're in a, in a, in a gigantic mall. Now, will this be a benefit to Nigeria or not? This is what I think we should be talking about. Because this is the same minister who, you know, said he spent he's spending um, how many billions to buy, uh, is it 12 or 10, uh, 12 billion there to buy 10 firefighting uh, um, trucks the airport which means that one is down to 1.2 billion there and people are why are people shouting don't they know <laughs> don't they know it's part of what we're talking about but anyway hopefully so which means there's that much money in the aviation industry <laughs> yeah. and these things are not done the you. minimum wage is not implemented i, I mean look from both sides yeah. of it yeah. it's it's crazy how how we showed the kind of wealth we have and that it cannot come back to us. It's crazy. But as it is, please, <laughs> people in the aviation industry, it is going to affect our economy so much, and we're hoping that this matter will be resolved. All right, all right. Um, how, 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 how is it going to affect the economy? Um, I mean, because it's, uh, it's a serious it's an economic issue, you know? Um, I think that I'm sure we'll get some of the, uh, those who crunch the numbers tell us you know, how much we lost in a day to the Nigerian economy if this uh, shutdown is implemented. Yeah, okay. and that's, that's another serious issue you should look at. You know, so, um, I don't know. Let's talk about the cost of the economy, <laughs> you know, and even the cost of importation and exportation. Yeah, even within the country, because do you know how many people will need to uh, go to Abuja, for instance, for a business transaction that cannot be done online? Uh, do you know how many people even will go for interviews that tomorrow will put uh, food on their table? Uh, do you know how many people are waiting on goods that need to arrive by plane? Do you know how many people uh, need to be somewhere, even for health issues, that cannot travel now because of that? So it's a whole lot, even if we don't have the numbers, but we can, 
we can deduce the implication to the economy and the people of Nigeria as a whole. All right. Well, we'll keep watching this, um, this space. You know, there's a lot to look at as far as that is concerned. Um, uh, and, of course, the aviation sector is really, very, really, very important. Um, uh, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll look at what the traffic uh, says. You know, we want to know what traffic in Lagos is like. You know, even if you're listening to us from outside Lagos or outside Nigeria, you can also, you know, tell us what the traffic is like in your city. Um, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll just look at what the traffic uh, says. And um, stay with us.